So my name is Jill Tarter. I'm here at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California. And this is my desk in transition. We moved two days ago, but the place will get a bit more personality and um, homey and a place you might like to visit sometime. This is a particularly special artifact, which was given to me by Barney Oliver. Barney actually ran HP Labs for about 25 years. And Barney was a very early SETI enthusiast. And Barney came by my office one day and plopped this down and said, if you're going to do this, you're going to need this because you're going to roll an awful lot of rocks up an awful lot of hills and they're going to come tumbling down and you're going to have to do it again. But that's just the price of trying to do something new. Science is never having to grow up and stop asking why. And we have to stop educating our kids to think that science is just a, a long list of facts that some old dead white men figured out a long time ago. It's not. Science is what's unknown. Oh yes, here's my first sob when it got to the moon. At the time, I was fresh into this business. Somebody called up and wanted to know how close the moon was. And I had, had to kind of figure it out from first principles. So I was never going to again forget that 250,000 miles is where the moon is. That's the natural position for your wrist, not that. So that's what this does. You don't believe that I can type here? That's true. So in high school, I got all this guidance. Like, why do you want to take calculus? You're just going to get married and have babies. Or, what do you mean you want to take a physics course? You're just going to be a housewife. This is for being named one of the Time 100 most influential people on the planet. How's that? Way back in the mid-80s, Annie and Carl you know, took me aside and they said, you may think you recognize someone in the book, but I think you'll like her. I'm going, ah, oh, come on, Annie. Nobody's going to think it's me. I'd spent time with Jody, which was a privilege and, and fun for me because there's a lot of technology in movie making. And I was thinking, you know, if I weren't doing what I'm doing, making movies might be fun. My dad was my whole universe when I was growing up. Unfortunately, he died when I was young. And I think that gave me a little bit of this stubbornness to say, okay, get out of my way. I know what I want to do. And I know for sure, given the experience I had with my dad, that if I don't do it today, the opportunity might not be there tomorrow. And it's just really a sign of getting old to accumulate all of this sort of thing. Oh, well, yes, the answer may be, we are alone. But even if I don't get to answer that question, whether the laws of physics and chemistry produced intelligent creatures elsewhere, I can still do something really profound. You can propagate this meme of Earthling. We're all the same when compared to something out there. I'm hoping that by getting the world involved in SETI, we can practice at doing big, hairy global projects. And maybe we can trivialize the differences among humans. And, and if we can do that, boy, that will be almost as impactful as finding a signal. Yeah, the meme of Earthly. Yeah, I mean, come on, I'm a hippie from Berkeley. Um, that's a big part of my personality. Uh, but being able to take a long view 
is very useful.